Hi, my name is Leon Rowe, currency trader and trading coach at trading180.com. Welcome to this week's supply and demand, forex and gold, fundamental and technical analysis. If you're new, a warm welcome to you. And if you're returning, an equally warm welcome to you. And please don't forget to like, subscribe and share with your fellow trading colleagues. Liking and subscribing is a free way to support the channel if you find the content useful. And if you are new to Trading 180 and the first time you're watching this video, my approach and the Trading 180 approach is really to combine fundamental analysis and technical analysis to really identify the best trades, not only the best uh, trades as far as uh, currency pairs and then identifying the best currency pairs but also identifying um, the pairs that are likely to range and pairs that are likely to trend and this is all done through understanding the relationship between inflation interest rates and the business cycle GDP and monetary policy and then we go down to technicals and look for supply and demand um, and apply supply and demand strategies um, risk management trade entries and profit targets are so combining the best of both worlds and for me if you're just doing one um, which most traders tend to just look for technical analysis you are literally I think uh, um, flying a bit blind on the uh, you're giving yourself a handicap if you don't understand the fundamental analysis anyways um, uh, getting into this week's um, uh, fundamental news what's coming up and what should drive the markets is the uh, central bank in the US, uh, Japan and the UK will be deciding on monetary policy in the coming week. Monetary policy is a driver of currency exchange rate value. Um, don't let anyone else tell you otherwise. Fundamentals are the, what moves the markets and risk sentiment and liquidity, not technicals. Um, while key data is to watch, uh, sorry, while key data to watch uh, for include the US and China industrial output and retail sales, Japan and Canada inflation data, UK consumer morale, Australia employment figures and retail trade, New Zealand fourth quarter GDP and India wholesale prices. So um, some market moving, potentially market moving uh, data coming out. And um, but really, we're looking at you know longer term trends when it comes to understanding monetary policy, inflation, and interest rates, and the, really the relationship between that. And I have uh, fundamental analysis courses on the uh, YouTube channel, and I'll try and remember at the end of this video when I'm editing this video to put them in the uh, the description box as well as uh, maybe some sort of notification on the top right hand side of the screen. So let's go into the uh, the technicals and. Some in-depth fundamentals as well and starting off as we always do on the US dollar index and the US dollar index is just a measure of um, dollar strength against the basket of currencies like the euro the uh, the pound the Japanese yen for example and um, if you see the dollar index you know basically moving to the downside then uh, you can expect really dollar crosses to kind of weaken and if you see the dollar index strengthening then you should uh, see obviously the dollar certain dollar crosses strengthening and um, this is just basically add some confluence to your trade when it comes to maybe the technicals but again we understand the technicals aren't what moves the markets it is fundamental analysis and the reason for the recent um, I guess uh, um, uh, uh, dollar strength really is because uh, the dollar is um, really kind of back on track when it comes to employment and GDP. So US jobless claims hit lowest since November with more vaccines. So initial claims fell by more than forecast as restrictions ease. Um, so um, claims for federal unemployment insurance uh, programs ballooned. But the point is, is that unemployment yeah, is, is going down. So applications for US job benefits fell by more than forecast last week, so less people are applying for for job ben um, unemployment benefits, um, which is a positive sign that there is employment. Yeah, and this is um, as COVID nineteen vaccinations accelerated and states eased more business restrictions. So again, employment businesses are going um, are getting back to some sort of normality. There's going to be some economic growth there, and so you're seeing. 
the dollar in the uh, um, uh, tent uh, well, over the past couple of weeks start to strengthen and uh, we also have um, the charting the global economy the US is turbocharging the world GDP so Joe Biden's 1.9 trillion stimulus plan isn't just boosting the US it's also helping economies around the world so um, you're seeing uh, you know uh, U.S. strength really or the potential for U.S. strength boost other um, countries economies but the, the 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 leader I guess or one of the leaders in the economic um, uh, with economic growth and GDP growth is the U.S. so um, that's always a plus in the plus comment column as to why you would want to buy the U.S. dollar not necessarily against every single other um, currency right but what you want to do is find the best currencies is look for positive growth on one country like the US dollar and then look for something that is lagging behind or is negative and that is what um, will produce price trends because you're trading you're buying a strong currency and you're selling a weak currency anyways back to the technicals for me um, I'm overall bullish on the dollar which means I'd be looking for any kind of pullbacks into uh, demand zone as any kind of confluence if you don't get it and prices tend to move higher um, then that's fine as well um, as long as uh, you're seeing overall dollar strength then um, I will be a buyer of the dollar and of course things can change doesn't mean that because I'm, I'm a buyer that you know if, if the data has to support the uh, the bias as well so if for example um, you know we get some GDP data that comes out that is you know way below what is what is expected and it's a really huge miss then I might want to think about buying the dollar but as the, the, the data is supporting you know unemployment claims sorry it's supporting a, uh, a stronger dollar I'm going to be a buyer of the dollar and that's pretty much what has been happening because the bond market you know was really the trigger for higher dollar prices and they are expecting obviously some sort of normality um, when it comes to uh, the economy inflation and some monetary policy in fact in 2023 I think it is or 2024 they're expecting rate hikes so they're looking you know a few years into the uh, into the future and rate hikes are always positive for a currency anyways if you are selling again look for any kind of bearish um, uh, confluence on the dollar index as uh, again some sort of confluence if you want to get short on the uh, on the US dollar moving on to the dollar yen and again in a risk off environment in a risk sorry in a risk off, yeah in a risk off environment apologies um the yen tends to do well because in a risk off environment uh, is is money will flow into safe haven assets in a risk on environment money will tend to flow into higher yielding currencies i've been saying this on a you know on a weekly basis if you're new and you didn't know that then now you know but if you've uh, been watching me for some time you should understand this and uh, this places you in a position where you can get into these trends yeah it's it's, it's this it's just the no-brainer right the you know we've got risk on sentiment the dollar, when you think of an interest rate perspective, I think is at 0 0.25 or is it 0 0.1? I think one of the two, right? Percent from an interest rate perspective, and the Japanese yen is at minus 0 0.1, meaning it's going to cost you money, yeah, to put to put your money in Japanese in the Japanese yen. So, from if we're in a risk on environment where traders are looking for a higher yield, this again adds another tick to the tick column, right? Why would you be buying the Japanese yen? In a risk off environment, in the sorry, in a risk on environment, it, you wouldn't. So you're seeing this happen and this play out in the market. So again, if you do want to be a buyer of the dollar, um, not necessarily looking at the uh, at the highs until we see some sort of proof of value. And proof of value would mean I'm looking for any kind of move to the upside to prevent us a higher high, then a pullback into what would be considered a demand zone as higher highs and higher lows are the strongest areas to look for um, uh, trades um, but until that happens for me I'm, I'm not really looking to buy at highs if we get a bit of a pullback down into that zone that would be nice we also have 
a nice uh, area of confluence when it comes to support and resistance. So unlike again, other traders who kind of look at um, support and resistance and supply and demand as separate uh, trading um, uh, uh, strategies and entities. In fact, support and resistance is supply and demand, and I've explained that in uh, in another video. And I'll try and again remember to put that in um, the description box below. Um, but basically, supply and demand um, is 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 really the genesis of all trading strategies, and uh, all um, support and resistance are is is past um, uh, supply and demand zones. And I'll give you an example of that. All right at some point. This is this area here would have been demand. Yeah, that area would have been demand. And all that is is that that's been projected into the future and just adds, uh, looks like support and resistance. But in fact, it was a past demand zone that has been traded several times and just been projected into the future as support and resistance. That's all that is. So we do look for confluences because not everyone trades supply and demand but they do, most traders would trade support and resistance. So if we get a pullback into this area and we wanna be buyers of the dollar and there's risk on, etc., yeah, then that is gonna be a really nice area to look for buy trades because not only are um, support and resistance traders looking to buy in this obvious er you know, area and at this obvious price of 107, we've also got supply and demand traders looking to get involved in here. So, um, Really nice uh, uh, confluence there. If we're looking for supply and sell trades, um, why you'd want to be a buyer of the yen, right? Being a buyer of the yen, meaning that you think that the yen is an absolute bargain at this price. Yeah, that's that's what you'd have to believe between this 109, uh, 850 and 109, uh, 15 um, uh, area. You'd have to believe that that was an absolute bargain for the yen for you to want to really Think that that's going to turn around of course it could just be profit taking but the smarter trade would be to look for pullbacks and look for um you know buying uh, the dollar again this is not financial advice just telling you what i would do and what i think is a smart trade moving on to the dollar swiss and the dollar swiss swiss rank is a safe haven currency and again doesn't do well in a risk um uh on the environment the, the, the dollar for me is I'm looking for any kind of buy trades I can at the moment hopefully it can pull back to this area here if not then cool that's fine if it creates a new high brilliant then that would be the area I'd look for buying the uh, the, the, the dollar um, against the Swiss franc so I'm just looking at uh, buy trades again on the dollar if you are looking to sell then you'd look between that um, that 94 Probably round number zone, probably somewhere within this area here to look for sell trades. Of course, anything can change. Fundamentals can change um, in the in in the short term, but medium to long term, I think the uh, the dollar is the buy as long as again data supports uh, that narrative. Uh, moving on to the dollar CAD, and the CAD has been absolutely uh, uh, again on a bit of a tear. Had some really kind of positive news. Um, with regards to the CAD, where, let me see if I can find it one second, or did I, did I actually, uh, did I delete it? I think I might have, I think I might have deleted it, but the dollar CAD, so I'm trying to look for it, or was it here, off screen, nope. Well, the CAD had some positive news with regards to uh, employment, and again, employment being um, uh, really kind of an economic marker for economic growth and this is what you're seeing as well you're seeing quite well, two strong currencies to be fair um uh, go competing against each other and what we should probably see is some sort of ranging market does that mean i want to be a buyer of the uh, of the uh, dollar around here not if the canadian dollar is seen as um stronger than the um uh, than the US economy so uh, there are better trades out there even though this is a really really nice I do like this area as a buy trade but um, I'm getting I'm buying the, the dollar and really kind of selling the um, the Canadian dollar and again the question is is the dollar a bargain it's harder to tell if it's a bargain down here uh, AIN um, against the Canadian dollar because the Canadian dollar is also you know quite strong it's a commodity currency and in, in a risk on environment commodity currencies will tend to strengthen so for me it's a bit of a tough one um, there are easier trades definitely out there to take even though technically I actually really really like this trade so um, personally I, I'm probably going to stay out of that 
but um, if you want to take that then uh, you know obviously be my guest and again this isn't financial advice uh, moving on to the New Zealand dollar US dollar again last week we did identify this area here as an area of you know potential reversal which happens again coincide with some confluence of um, uh, support and resistance that level had been kind of touched uh, twice already three times now for me um, I think this this zone here isn't necessarily the best um, uh, again the New Zealand dollar is a commodity currency and should do well with the US dollar also you know doing well again there are easier trades for me to take and more obvious levels and more obvious directions uh, to, to kind of predict than looking at the New Zealand dollar, US dollar. But if you do want to get, you know, if you feel like you need to trade this, I'd probably say the, the level below that, that 70, 50, and even the 70 uh, cent round number at the bottom of this zone would be a really nice zone to look for a buy trade. If you're looking for sell trades, I would say the best area is not really here. I would say it's probably around this zone here to look for any kind of sell trades if I wanted to be uh, getting uh, short on the New Zealand dollar and buying a new, the uh, US dollar. Moving on to the pound dollar and the pound dollar again, um, two pretty strong sentiment currencies because the, uh, the British pound has been really leading the way uh, when it comes to the vaccine rollout and also as well, we've got a bit of um, uh, UK news. GDP. So the UK economy shrank less than expected in January's lockdown. So spending on health and construction softened the slump and Brexit triggered a 40.7% uh, drop in exports to continental Europe. So the UK economy shrank less than expected during coronavirus lockdown in January, driven by a surprise gain in construction and stronger activity in the sector. So gross domestic product fell uh, 2.9, which is much smaller than the 4.9% contraction that economists had forecast. Uh, the, uh, the government statistic office said gains from those segments um, also helped soften the 40.7% drop in exports to the European Union in the first month after Britain's exit from the bloc. So better than expected um, GDP, really, which is always going to be positive for the uh, for the UK and again leading the way in vaccinations um, the pound is probably going to be you know quite um, a, a strong currency going forward sentiment wise now again with two strong currencies you know uh, whether they're being driven by sentiment or actually data these trades are for me harder to take Again, if I was looking to take any kind of trades, it would probably be to the short side because what tends to happen is if you've got two strong currencies or two weak currencies, the likelihood that you'll see some sort of ranging market at some point, either it might range from there or it might range from around, the, you know, the bigger range might be here is more, is uh, is probably highly higher, has a higher probability of working out, right? So if anything, if I'm gonna, if I'm gonna probably trade this pair, I'm probably gonna look to buy the dollar against the um, the UK and I'll probably end up selling somewhere around this uh, 1.42, 1.41 1 area but um, we'll see if prices do get back up to those uh, those prices. Um, for now we are in again a bit of a range between a high and a low so this is this high has been seen as quite expensive, the bottom of that zone has been seen as quite cheap so from a value range perspective we did come up to what is known as fair value which is 50 percent and uh, depending on which one you want to be a buyer or seller whether it's the base or the quote currency um, this is obviously cheap for the dollar and this would be seen as a cheap area for the uh, the, the, the pound gbp i should so i should put not gdp All right so fair value but for me i think if i'm going to get take a trade on this I'm gonna look for any kind of short trades around this uh, this this supply zone if it can come up to here um, but again not the best uh, tr uh, trade fundamentally to take but I do love this uh, technically I do actually like that, that that supply zone from a technical analysis perspective now moving on to the euro dollar euro dollar um, it is trade that I've been in from, the, from here and here have been really really good trades and uh, took some profit here got a small position open on the pullback so just looking for really uh, pullbacks now my bias again is for long dollar and short euros and um, one of the um, uh, 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 
articles that I was reading over the weekend uh, was that all eyes on Fed after ECB juices up bond yield uh, divergence trade. So um, basically, the European Central Bank promises to significantly boost the pace of bond purchases is threatening to turbocharge yield divergence with the US that could drive money out of Europe unless the Federal Reserve ramps up, ramps up its commitment to ease policy next week. And basically, uh, the bond market is um is betting that the uh, there's going to be a recovery in the US and not so much in Europe so that's creating what's known as uh, a bit of a yield divergence and it's uh, it's it's really kind of pointed out uh, several times in this uh, in this article so uh, it says, uh, I think it's here, from Lida to Lagarde, and global bond markets have rocketed so far this year on reflation bets. But while the US and UK inoculation programs are steaming ahead, Europe still remains far behind and expectations for price rises are lagging. Yeah, So it was a reversal of sorts from last year when the region led the way in controlling the spread of the virus and providing employment support via furlough programs. So again last year europe were um you know uh, were seen as the leaders right in in supporting the economy hence the reason why you saw you know last year a bit of a move policies you know were definitely um, seen as favorable for europe right but now you're seeing a bit of a change in that whereas now the us is seen is being seen as leading europe and you're seeing this actually start to play out again fundamentals all price movements all major price movements can be explained with fundamentals and risk sentiment yeah and this is how we predict um you know where prices are potentially going to go not we're not going to get it right all the time of course because there's a timing issue and things but we can get the overall macro direction the long-term direction right then um, everything should fall into place um also in that article as well just to you know reiterate i guess uh, the euro areas recovery is expected to lag behind most advanced economies and the guard noticed uh, sorry noted considerable uncertainty facing the region on thursday and said downside risks continue to persist in the near term in the US, meanwhile, output is expected to reach pre-pandemic levels by the middle of this year, which the recovery amplified by a wide-ranging relief package pushed by President Biden. Some of that growth is likely to translate into higher demand for goods and services from the euro area, the guard said, though that wasn't uh, accounted for in the ECB's latest projection of 4% growth in 2021. So there are key differences as well between um, you know the stimulus packages and also the, where the economy potentially is going and again Europe lagging behind lagging behind um, the US for me again I will continue to ch take uh, short trades um, and if we can kind of get back up to even this this uh, supply zone here it's another um, uh, uh, t I guess chance to kind of um, you know get short around here and again we also have what would be uh, some nice horizontal confluence where you've got support there support there support there support there should turn to what resistance so lots of confluence around this 2050 area and that we know that this was a bargain for the dollar this was an absolute bargain because we see prices go to the downside so then the first touches of levels are always the best areas to look for um you know touches uh, or i guess trades in the direction that you want to trade in from a fundamental perspective so for me euro dollar um shorts but if you do disagree or you see things otherwise which are always um entitled to everyone's entitled to their opinions and you want to get long on the euro and short on the dollar then i'd probably say wait for a price to kind of pull back to this area here before looking at getting uh, long so back to this 18 um probably this 18 um 11850 or if prices do make a higher high then a pull back into a zone because that would create a lower um sorry a higher low higher high in that area there and then you'd look for any kind of long trades within that uh within that zone moving on to the euro yen and the euro yen um and even though i'm, I'm short on the uh on the euro dollar doesn't mean that the euro yen is a is a short trade right but what we've got here is again the yen being seen as probably the weaker out of the two 
in the euro is you know making higher highs and higher lows so any kind of pullbacks into this zone here is a decent buy if you do want to be a buyer of the euro um i probably wouldn't do it against the um uh, the dollar but i would look to buy the euro against the uh, the japanese yen um it's a decent we've made new highs that's a decent zone to get long on if you're looking to get short there's no really immediate supply zones so i'd wait for proof of value meaning that i'd wait for price to really kind of go to the downside and then prove that there's that the, that the japanese yen is a bargain at this price and then look for a pullback to that supply zone before getting short but in a risk on environment i can't see the yen really being a buy um uh, on any with any currency pair moving on to the aussie dollar again similar to um the dollar cad and the new zealand dollar the australian dollar um for me is 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 a buy but would i buy it against the us dollar at the moment probably uh, actually, actually i say probably i definitely won't um because again you've got two you know pretty much strong currencies a commodity currency against another currency that's growing so the chances of um you know this being a bargain at some point is uh, is very difficult to kind of see and uh, really kind of uh, establish so um we're kind of mid-range as well so between that high and that low if i'm looking to buy anywhere uh, or buy the dollar it would have to be again at an, at an all-time high or if i was looking to buy the uh, the australian dollar it would have to be somewhere around a fresh area of supply. For me though, this currency pair isn't um, great fundamentally, it's not necessarily the clearest. Technically though, um, there are some nice zones. This is a really nice zone, a nice fresh area of supply. Lower high, lower low, pull back to that, really nice technically. But we know that technicals don't drive price. If the market doesn't see this as a bargain for the US dollar because if you were looking to get short here it means that you're looking to buy the US dollar and if you're looking to buy the US dollar you're, you're saying that the US dollar is an absolute bargain against the Australian dollar at this price point now the question is is it really when you consider the Australian dollar is also you know growing with GDP uh, it's a commodity currency and normally does do well in an environment like what we're seeing now so um, for me that's not it that's really not the trade but technically it's very nice so you know currency selection based off of fundamentals and risk sentiment is what you know can keep you out of um you know uh, uh lower probability trades so for me it would have to be up here uh, at this 79 and again 80 cent range or probably at a fresher area of demand but overall i'm probably not even looking at this currency pair uh, to trade anyway um but it doesn't mean that you shouldn't now, uh, moving on to the Aussie yen, and as I've been saying, that again, the Japanese yen is not gonna do well in a risk off, sorry, in a risk on environment, in a risk off environment, the Japanese yen does very well, but as we're growing, as far as GDP, this is what you're gonna get, right? You're going to get this. Of course, you're gonna get pullbacks, but you've seen this, this trend since pretty much last year and it's really because of the vaccine rollout and the recovery so um with that being said um we are into this supply zone and there's no supply zone that's going to stand in the way of fundamental analysis if this is seen as a bargain for the australian dollar then there's no supply zone that's going to hold right in the same way there's no demand zone that's going to hold if the market doesn't think that that area is a bargain so what i will do is i'm going to draw the supplies on there just for um uh just to kind of clear the chart but it's also a bit of a you know wide demand zone here i would say that if i was looking to be a buyer i'm looking for a pullback into this zone and looking for probably some sort of intraday support and resistances and other confluences um uh, to look for any kind of long trades but um, I think the best area would be again down into this, uh, a bit of a better pullback into this uh, 82 to 81 area. The 82 round number does seem like a very nice uh, uh, trade. Again, prices pull back into that zone there. Fresh area is the best area. Second touches are fine, so I think my long-term bias is to buy the Australian dollar, but I'm waiting for a pullback. If this pulls back, you know, if this goes through there, then that'd be even better. Then I just wait for pullbacks into this 83 area as the uh, as the optimum trade. And I'm gonna draw also as well, a bit of a, 
uh, horizontal support in that area there. One sec, let me just uh, change the color on that. There we are. And then finally, we're looking at gold. Now, gold, um, like uh, you know, obviously trades inversely to the dollar. So if you're, if I'm, a, if, if I'm buying the dollar, then um, I'm going to look to probably short gold. Now, I'm personally not a, a, a shorter of gold. Gold is, you know, generally um, um, a, a buy in the um in the in definitely the medium to long term but in the short term while we have positive sentiment around um the dollar i don't think uh, gold would be the best place or is the, really the best trade if you're looking to kind of buy um gold at the moment um especially with the fact that money is probably going into um you know bonds as well because bonds are now paying a yield right they're paying a yield so money's flowing really out of gold in a sense and into kind of bonds potentially the stock market in a risk on environment yeah the you know gold and, and precious metals don't typically do well in a risk on environment when i'd start to look to probably buy and accumulate gold again or we'll start to trade gold is more when inflation starts to get out of hand if there are worries about inflation and that narrative starts to pick up then i would probably look for some sort of gold buying um, but until that narrative does pick up i think gold um, may continue to suffer also as well there is um, you know a, a blackrock article that says blackrock are a, they manage i think it's uh is it billion is it is it billions um trillions or something like that maybe seven trillion well, they're a massive um a really really big uh hedge fund and blackrock says gold failing as equity hedge faces risks so uh, global money manager um just delivered a double barreled warning on the merits of holding traditional haven gold right now yeah bullion is proving to be less effective hedge against moves in other assets such as stocks uh, as well as inflation according to russ uh, Costa Rich, portfolio manager for BlackRock Global Allocation Fund. Moreover, gold faces headwinds that, um, or should the recovery pick up pace, he warned in a blog post. So that's pretty much what you know I've been saying as well. So um, if if the if there's risk on, yeah, gold is going to be a bit of a difficult buy at the moment. And um, doesn't mean that gold won't pull back. Doesn't mean that gold won't go up. But um, I think the, the the view on gold right now is um, probably a bit bearish so again i'd have to really kind of see gold prove that there's you know it's it's a bargain at this price this 17 1680 to 1700 and then maybe a bit of a pullback into that zone before looking at getting long but for now i think sentiment is against gold at the moment um and with the you know the u.s economy you know picking up um, for me, I'm not really um, looking to trade this, but there are obviously shorting opportunities. And if you do want to get short on this, um, then you know this was this would have been a nice opportunity to get short. Again, intraday, what you would look for is a pullback into a zone. Look for um, any kind of entry, whatever your entry is, and then look for a sell trade. And uh, depending again on the sentiment. This is where um, it depends on how far prices will go, right? If gold is definitely seen as, or the dollar is definitely seen as a bargain here, which it looks like it was, that there would have been some sort of entry in there on a one hour, 30 minute, you know, et cetera, whatever time frame you look to trade. Just make sure you've got enough downside risk uh, and rewards. So what I mean by that is if you're looking to enter, yeah, on a lower time frame, which we always do, and let's just say that that was your entry, yeah, that was your risk, for example, do you have enough downside potential? So for me, I always look for two to ones as an absolute minimum, looking to double my money um, before you know you actually get into some problem areas. And what is a problem area? A problem area would be there. And why is that a problem area? Because price is reversed there and is likely to reverse potentially or could reverse there. Now, let's say, for example, your risk reward is skewed. And let's say, for example, you enter it somewhere, somewhere down here. Yeah, and your stop is somewhere here. And look at your risk reward now. Yeah, it's it's, an, it's basically you know inverse. So I'm always thinking to myself, and as, as a criteria, is my 
you know, is my uh, risk reward downside? Is it worth it? Do I have at least a two to one before I even get to, um, you know, the, the, uh, any kind of problem areas? And if I do, you know, if it ticks those boxes, then I'm taking that trade. But um, from a sell trade perspective, again, it depends on whether you want to be a buyer of the, uh, the, the dollar. And if you do want to be a buyer of the dollar, then an option would be to kind of sell gold um, when it comes to uh, buying the dollar. Anyways, guys, that's it for this week. Um, I really do hope you have a great trading week and uh, I'll try and get back to uh, the, the comments on YouTube. Thank you for all the positive comments and questions and queries. And um, yeah, I hope you all have a great trading week and until the next video, take care.